for me. Jesus you're, my king. Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. Hell Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but your be done. Can we take it up? Oh, hell, Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my day. You're perfect in all your ways. Hell, Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I want to see your kingdom come. Not mine, but your be done. Can we take it up again? Oh, glory, glory to the Lamb. You will take us into the land. We will conquer in your name. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. Hell, hell, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all of my days. You're perfect in all your ways. Can we take it up again? Oh, hell, Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Oh, glory, glory to the Lamb. You will take us into the land. We will conquer in your name. name. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. Oh, hell, hell, the light of Judah. Oh, how wonderful you are. Hell, hell, the light of Judah. Say he's the king. 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 Oh, hell, hell, line of Judah. How wonderful you are. We just bless the Lord for our children's ministry, amen, and the workers, Sister Mel and her team, they do a fantastic job with our children, and you can see, amen, 
I have a couple announcements that I'd like to highlight. The first one is uh, we are happy to report that we are full. Amen. So we're going to ask everyone if you'll take, pick your purses and your coats up and lay them on the floors and scoot in. Look closer to your sister and brother. Amen. The first announcement I have is our youth Bible study for the uh, middle school and high school will begin Wednesday, February the 1st from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. So parents, bring your, all of your youth out and let them be a, a part of that ministry. Amen. And for our next announcement, we're going to bring up Brother Al back. He has a special announcement from the media ministry. All right. Good morning, church. All right. Just uh, once again, just give it up for the babies again. That was wonderful. Did a great job. Thank you to all the parents and everyone who helps make that a part. Um, I won't be before you long. I just wanted to come before you this morning again. Um, just talking about some of the things that we're going to do in 2017 for the media ministry. Um, so with that, myself and Will and a few members of our team help volunteer. We're looking for more consistent volunteers. Um, in 2017, we want to start to do more commercials, videos like you guys saw, um, doing some social media activities, and we need more bodies to actually bring that, those things to fruition. So again, if you're someone in the congregation that has an interest in media, music, uh, commercials, social media, any of those type of avenues. If any of those things um, have any interest, uh, please see myself or Will on the back. Wave, Will. There you go. And um, please get with us, and we'll be starting setting up that team. So again, um, anyone that has any interest in any of those areas, please reach out to Will or myself. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And then our uh, next announcement is Children's Church will begin, uh, resume back on Sunday, February the 5th at 11.30 a.m. Turn to your neighbor and say, volunteers are needed. needed. Come out and support our children. The last and final announcement is starting this coming Wednesday, February the 1st. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to a breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Pastor starting a new series that will begin from February the 1st through the 22nd of February. So we invite you to come out and join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Amen. This concludes our announcements as we prepare to go forward in worship. We have a special uh, dance uh, performance coming from our very own dance ministry. Let's just bless the Lord as they come forward. Your family needs you to get through it. 
But here's the key. You can make it if you just pray through it. You gotta pray through Don't it. Let this be the end for you. God only allowed it because he knew you could survive it. So God told Darren, and I said yes, because I'm going to be available for the, what the Lord has for me. So this morning, I prayed, because I didn't want my flesh to be revealed, because fear is my flesh, but I'm a worshiper. Um, so this is a text that I read this morning that gave me some comfort. It's from 1 Samuel 2, 6 uh, through 9b. It says, the Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down the, to the grave and rises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts, lifts the needy from the ash heaps. He seats them with princes and he has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundation of the earth are the Lord's on them he sets the world. It is not strength, it is not by strength that one prevails. It's because we come through the throne. God, um, it's not our battle, it's the Lord. So those that know me know that this is not what I do, but I am a worshiper. So I'm gonna worship today, and I hope that you all join me.
wanna be. I wanna be. I wanna be in your presence, Lord. It's where I wanna be. 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 I wanna please you, Lord. I wanna please you, Lord. I wanna be. I wanna be. I want. Lord, it's where I want to be. 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 I want to please you, Lord. I want to be available to you, Lord. I want to be. I want to be. I want to be. I want to be. Right here in your presence, Lord. In your presence, Lord. Thank you for your presence, in your Lord. Presence, in your presence, Lord. In your presence, Lord. Mm. It's so sweet, God. Thank you for your presence, in Lord. Your presence, in your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence, Lord. In your presence, Lord. That's where I want to be. Thank you, God. Yes, in your presence, Lord. I wanna be, I wanna be. In your presence, in your presence Lord. It's where, where I wanna be. I wanna be, I wanna be. I wanna be, I wanna be. In your presence, Lord. That's where I wanna be. In your presence, Lord. That's where I wanna be.
let the people of God say amen. Won't you give God a hand clap of praise and celebrate him and honor him if you want to be in his presence. That's all I want to be in his presence. I just want to be at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Voices of the Oasis, for ministering unto us and allowing the Spirit of God to move in a significant way because it's in the presence of God. The Bible says where the Lord, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom, there's healing, there's restoration. Whatever you need, it's in the presence of God. And when we are hungry to be in the presence of God, that's when things will change in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've been sermonically strolling through the scriptures, and God has been blessing uh, this year as we've been in a series entitled, It's Time to Make a Change. And we started off the year and talking about it's time to change your attitude, uh, recognizing that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then we talked about changing your pattern, changing the way you think about things, how you look at life and time to switch some things up. And then we talked about it's time to change your self-perception, the way that you look at yourself how you see yourself. You need to see yourself as the way God sees you. See yourself bigger than where you are because you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And on last week, we talked about it's time to change how you talk to people because uh, sometimes we can say some devilish things and it's not what we say, but how we say it. It's the tone in which we use as we express and talk with one another and so we looked at it's time to change. And so we have just two more installments. It's a six-part series. Uh, we're going to finish up on next Sunday. Uh, so this is the fifth installment, the fifth Sunday. We would invite you to turn your attention to the gospel according to Mark. The gospel according to Mark. In the second chapter, and we're going to lift up verses 2. through five, the gospel according to Mark, two through five, the second chapter of the gospel according to Mark, verses two, oh, excuse me, beginning at verse two, and we will conclude at verse five. So many gathered that there was no room left not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. I want to preach from the subject, it's time to change your friends. It's time to change your friends. Look at the person beside you and say, he must be talking about you. Amen. Amen. I'm just joking. No, I'm joking. They, 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 they're not the ones you need to change. Amen. There are some others. It's time to make a change. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father in heaven, we can do nothing until you come. Make foul the ground of the souls of your people that the seed of truth would find death in such a unique and profound way that as we feel your presence in this place, we will never be the same. We pray even right now that you would use me in spite of me, look beyond my faults, flaws, and failures, and see our needs. Speak, Lord, for your people here. Make foul the ground that the souls of your people would find truth in such a unique and profound way that our lives would never be the same because we've come in contact with the Christ. I pray for that sinner that doesn't know you and the partner that sin, that as they hear the word, they would ask the eternal question, what must I do to be saved? And I pray for the saint who's saved but experiencing trials, troubles, and tribulations. I pray that your word would minister to them in such a unique way that they would be encouraged to continue to fight on. And then, God, I pray for that saint who's saved but not serving. I pray that your word would convict them to get up off their flowery bed of ease and begin serving in this portion of your vineyard. We honor you and celebrate you and all that we have and all that we are. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And the people of God said together, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, it's time to change your friends. My brothers and sisters, if you scratch the sur surface of social psychology, it's easy to see that people fall prey to the power of social influence. Dr. Solomon asked, executed an experiment whereby subjects were manipulated in giving the wrong answer, even though they knew that it was the wrong answer because half of their peers echoed the error is incor as incorrect. They knowingly gave the wrong answers so that they would not go away from the crowd. Social acceptance has a strength that far surpasses steroids. It is that every person somewhere in their mind wants to be accepted and legitimized by their circle of friends. It is that every person somewhere in their mind who wants to be accepted and legitimized, when it comes to bad habits, please write this down, there are two kinds of people that are around you when it comes to bad habits, two types of people around you. You have friends around you, and the second group you have around you is our accomplices. And I'm going to give you some basic information, but because uh, but, but here's what I want to do. I want to save you this morning from some illegal friendships. Let me say that again. I want to save you this morning from some illegal friendships because friends help you to succeed. Accomplices help you to conceive. Accomplices will aid and abet you with the crime of your bad habits. While friends would dig a pothole down and write in a, a pothole to stop you from going down a path of self-destruction. And, and if you don't remember anything else, I want you to write this down and get this in your spirit uh, because this, this is one profound thought that I want you to have. And that simply is this. Enjoying somebody's company don't make them your friend. Let me say that again. Enjoying somebody's company does not make them your friend. And, and please write that down because if they take you off course, if they lower your standards, compromise your convictions, they are not friends, they are accomplices. As of this moment, my brothers and sisters, you came to this service, you are now held accountable to what I'm saying. Before this moment, if you didn't know better, you didn't have to do better, but now you know better, some things are about to change. So as of this moment, you're getting ready to start changing who you call friend. You're either going to have to change who you call friend or the friends you have are going to have to change. See, your friends define what is your normal. The people you associate with will define what your normal is because, see, you can easily slip up from being big to becoming obese without realizing it based on the people you hanging out with. 
I'm telling you the truth because, see, if all of your friends are gaining weight, you won't even notice that you're in the circle of big time before you know it. And it's not until you begin to walk away from your friends that you begin to analyze, like, wait a minute, I used to could fit this. I used to could wear this. I used to could put this on. It's, something is wrong. I don't know what it, maybe it's shrunk in the cleaners. It's shrunk in the, the devil is a liar. You in the t- circle of big time. But but because you know something is out of order all, all of a sudden because you're running with the crowd who just hangs out at the mall and all of y'all broke. All of you all are broke because you, and then after you all of you all are broke, you all are commiserating about the bills that you have because you ran them up together because you were in a circle of friends and, and watch this who are broke. And if you're in a circle of friends that are broke. Guess what? That defines your normal. So you begin to think that that having bills and being in debt is normal and you don't do anything about it. And and let me help you to understand if everybody around you is having trouble with bills, reevaluate your friends because they are not going to be able to help you if all of your friends club all weekend long. And that's what it's going. That's what they see as normal. You're going to see that as normal. If all of your friends drink immediately after work, that will become your normal. If all of your friends sleep with random people, that's going to be your normal. If all of your friends put their image over their integrity, that's going to be your normal. If all of your friends are doing something illegal, that's going to be your normal. See, your friendships define your normalcy. See, your, your, your weight prospect, my brothers and sisters, of going up, watch this, you, you will gain weight 54% of the time if your friends are out of shape. Y'all ain't going to like this this morning. Just look straight ahead. Don't look to your right or to your left. Just look straight ahead. You, you, you know the same that you are what you eat, but you become who you associate with. So if you are the only one of your friends that goes to church and has a prayer life that's focused on the glory of God, soon your discipline and your joy and your affection for the things of God will be lower because your friends think it's normal not to come to church. Not being unequally yoked is not relegated just to dating. It's connected to the alliances and the associations that you connect with. I, I got to give you something else. Write this down. Silence can sink a friendship. Silence can sink a friendship because there's somebody in your familiar circle who has a habit or a lifestyle or a pattern that is dangerous and nobody's saying nothing because y'all don't want to upset them. You see where they're headed, you know where they're going, but you are silent, and silence can sink a friendship. So everybody remains silent until tragedy comes. Then when the tragedy comes, all of a sudden you're filled with guilt, shame, and remorse, saying, I should have said something, I saw it coming. See, the test of your friendship is if we can get mad at each other and remain friends. I can't hear nobody in here. See, I got to love you enough to offend you. I got to get to the place where I'm your real friend. And here it is. I am not, my brothers and sisters, going to say what you want me to say. I'm not going to say what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need. See, we can cuss each other out. We can scream. We can not talk for three or four days. But watch this. We're going to get past all of that because I'm your real friend. I can't hear nobody. That's all right. See, your ability to change is, in fact, my brothers and sisters, impacted by your accomplices. You will change based off of who you, who you have in your corner. See, the people in your corner will either lower your expectations or they'll raise your faith. See, it's important that while you're trying to change who you are trying to change, how you're trying to change yourself, it's important that you begin to check out who's around you. 
Because if you're trying to stop drinking, then you can't be hanging with drinkers. Because if you're hanging out with drinkers or you're trying to drink, the probability of you being sober is going to be bleak to minimal. If you're trying to get out of an unhealthy relationship and all of your friends are miserable, here's what they're going to tell you, girl. You better stay, man. You better stay in that relationship for security at the cost of your own happiness. So you got to make sure that your friends have been where you are and are going where you're trying to go. Because if your friends are satisfied with where they are, they're going to sabotage what you're trying to do in changing your life. So you have, to, you have to be friends with dreamers and people who are hungry after the same things that you're hungry for. Because if you hang out with people who have no ambition, watch this, they will try to lower you down and your drive and your capacity to lowering it to where they are. See, try, they are trying to convince you that you're doing way too much and you, you need to slow down. But let me help you out with something. Eagles don't hang out with chickens. I'm going to help somebody this morning. Eagles do not hang out with chickens. And if you got a bunch of chickens and you're an eagle, you're in the wrong place. Chickens make a lot of noise, but they don't go nowhere. I want to make sure that you are connected with some eagles who are soaring to the highest heights where God is trying to take you. See, that, that's why a lot of people, when you are anointed, when you are focused, your friendship circles will begin to get smaller. Because, see, everybody can't hang out with you at the level of anointing and transition you with you because everybody is not equipped to go where you're going. Because, see, everybody likes you where you used to be. They don't like you where you're going. Because peers not only help define what is normal, but peers also define what is possible. See, everybody at some level, and I don't, care, uh, I don't care how secure you are, all of us need affirmation. We need someone to affirm what we're doing. That's why that if I'm dreaming, I need to have somebody I can bounce my ideas off of and affirm what I'm doing to make sure that what, in fact, I'm dreaming about is legitimate. And, and the Lord gave this to me and said, God said, Vincent, look at the life of Joseph who is an incredible dreamer, who did great things in the kingdom of God and for the body of Christ, who in fact impacted and improved his own family life. Nowhere do you see where Joseph had a whole bunch of friends. Because what God is saying to you, that if you are a dreamer, you got to learn how to deal with loneliness. Because when it is you are thinking outside the box, you got to be able to comfort yourself because you understand, watch this, that my best friend is my purpose. My best friend is my purpose. And because my best friend is my purpose, if anybody wants to get between me and my best friend, the best friend of mine, because they don't understand where I'm going, we can really have some problems. See, I need a few people who are in this room who can say, Pastor, you know what? I've come through a lonely season, but I'm not depressed. I, I've come through a, a lonely season, but I'm not suicidal. I'm not sad. I'm, I'm not stressed out because watch this. What's happening with me? I got up this morning and it's not people, but it's my purpose and my passion that's driving me. See, I need whoever's going to be in my space to be connected to where I'm going. So you got to be careful of those who will not keep you and hold you accountable. Because if they're not willing to hold you accountable, they're not your friends. You have to have accountability partners. And, and, and if, if I'm trying to, to get out of debt, my friends need to know, uh, listen, here I am. I'm trying to get out of debt. And if you see me going to the mall, stop me. If you hear me talking about a sale at Macy's, stop me. I ain't got no coupons. I ain't trying to go there. I just stop me. See, if you know that I'm trying to focus on losing weight, how are you going to fix all them desserts and ask me if I want some? I need somebody to hold me accountable. You got to have some accountability people, whether it is you indulging in or for a party or whatever it is that you're trying to change in your life. You got to have some people who are in your corner that can say you can do this. 
See, authentic friends really serve in three different capacities if they're if they your real friends. And, and write this down because your friends has got to be able to do three things. And I, and I, cannot, I cannot emphasize enough how important this is because if your friends don't do this, these three things, then you need to ground, downgrade their title today. Uh, that you need to downgrade the title. First thing your friend has to be is your coach. The second thing your friend has to be is your referee. And the third thing your friend has got to be is a fan. They got to be a coach, they got to be a referee, and they got to be a fan. They got to be a coach because, see, here's what a coach would do. A coach would sit down with you and, and, and with you and, and write out a plan, come up with a plan. That's what a coach does. He sits down with the team, she sits down with the team, and they come up with the plan. So if they're your real friend, here's what you should they They shouldn't have any problems discussing with you the plans you have for your future. If you watch this, if you are uh, hesitant as to whether you can share your plans and your dreams with that person, let me share something with you. That is a signal for you whether or not they are your real friends or not. Because a real friend has to be a coach that you can sit down and talk to. Hey, I'm envisioning this for my life. God's spoken to my heart. He has me looking in this direction, and they got to be there for you. And my brothers and sisters, if you're not sure if you got a whole lot of friends, this is an exercise that I, wanna, I want you to do today. I'm going to give you this exercise, and I want to give it to you, and I want you to do it this week. And, and if you want to see who your real friends are, here's what I want you to do. The exercise that I want everybody in the room to do is to write out your funeral program. I want you to write out your funeral program. And when you write it out, you got one hour for the funeral. you got to have a song. You're going to have an obituary. You're going to have acknowledgments, and then you got to have a eulogy. Which one of your friends are you going to have speaking for you in church? I want you to think about this. You got, you got to see which one of your friends that you can trust at the microphone without killing you all over again. That, lit, that list just got smaller and smaller and smaller. See, they got to be your coach, but not only do they have to be your coach, they got to be your referee. See, when I'm, when I'm breaking the rules, I, I'm going to, when I'm going too far, I'm going to have to have somebody to pull me back in. Girl, I'm going out with him, and I, I really like him, but I, I'm trying to do the right thing. If you don't hear from me by 11 o'clock, I'm at the Cheesecake Factory, run in there and announce that my house is on fire because you got to get me out of there. I want you to hold me accountable. I need you to be my referee. Call me. Come in there. I need you to referee. See, if, if I know that when I eat most snacks, sugar snacks and candy during my lunch break, I need you to referee. Call me at 12 noon and let's have prayer so I won't go in the break room and eat all them donuts and cookies and coffee and birthday cake pieces that I don't even want, but somebody's having me to eat it. I, I need you to call me. See, I, I see, ain't nothing happening at that church. Just you got, you got to recognize that it doesn't happen just at church. You got to learn how to pray 24-7. If you know how to pray, if you don't know what to pray for, how, read the Psalms. Read 20, Psalms 91, 92, 93. I, I, you need a referee to help you with the rules. So if, if, if I'm broke, do not go window shopping. Please don't go window shopping because it just, I, I ain't got no money. I'm just going to look at it. What it does is entices you to when you do get some money, instead of saving it, now you're spending it. You, you got to learn how to trust God and ask God to open up window of heaven and pour out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. And here's the third kind of friend that you got to have. You got to have a cheerleader. You got to have a fan. And look at this because this is very critical because many of you do not have it. You don't have a fan. You don't have a cheerleader because you got a, a lot of undercover haters. See, your real friends who are, are your fans, they, they are cheering you on every time you get closer to your success. See, your goal to lose 20 pounds, you got a goal to lose 20 pounds, and you just lost two. Uh, your real friends ought to be shouting with you, girl, you did it. You done lost two pounds. Man, you did it. You look good in that suit. It was tight on you two weeks ago, but it's looking good. You got to cheer them on. Now, now, you don't want to hear, now, you think you cute now. You done lost a little weight, two pounds. You don't want, you think you better than everybody else. You, no, you got to get somebody who's going to cheer you on. 
Look at your neighbor and say, I'm trying to figure out if you're my real friend. I'm trying to figure out if you're my real friend. You, you know I'm trying to change my life by the end of this year. And I want to see if you will celebrate with me before I ever get there. Do, do, do me a favor because the person beside you, they're not used to real friends. Would you just cheer them like you believe they're going to accomplish the change in their life? I want to cheer you up. You're going to make it, man. You're going to make it, girl. You're going to do it. You're going to make that change in your life. That's a real friend next to you. They cheering for you. They don't even know what they cheering. They just believe in you. The fact that you're sitting next to them. You, just because you're a child of God, they're saying, you're going to make it to where you're trying to go. That's what really brings us to the text. And we, we find a man who's paralyzed and he cannot walk. I mean, Mark chapter 2, verse 2 through 5. And you're going to have to read all of this yourself. It's a powerful passage, uh, but I don't have a lot of time to read all of it and unpack all of it. But I want to talk about this to argue what I'm trying to share. He's paralyzed and this man has followed, has followed what I've been telling you. He has four friends. And watch this because it's going to blow your mind. None of his friends are handicapped. He has four friends. None of them are handicapped. All of his friends can do what he wants to do. God help me in here. Because see, some of you all are going to remain handicapped because you keep hanging around sick people. And you can't keep hanging around sick people and try to get whole if they all sick. See, see, whenever you got friends, you, you got a goal and you got to make sure that your friends can do what it is that you can't do. So if, if you're bad with money, you got to get around some friends that know how to save, that know how to invest and know how to tithe. See, you, you didn't get that third when I said you got to learn how to save, you got to learn how to invest, and you got to learn how to tithe. Those are the friends you need to be around. You don't need to be around friends who say, I'm trying to tithe. I'm trying to get it together, but I just can't seem to trust God. No, you need to be around some people saying, you know what? I give God his first fruits. I'm getting into next week's sermon, so let me hold up. Uh, don't let me give you too much because y'all might not come back. But here's the thing you need to recognize, that you got to make sure that when you're with a person, that they can look at you and they can do what you can't do. So here it is. It, he made sure that he has some authentic friends that could do what he couldn't do. And at this moment, he does not need any accomplices. He needs some friends because friends make up in their, his friends make up in their mind. Watch this. The text says that he's a paralytic, but it does not say that they go and they use uh, that he was born that way. He's a paralytic, but he's not born that way. So his friends look at him and say, that is not normal. You need some friends that can look at your life and look at some things and say, that's not normal. That here's what it is that they, they said, listen, we can walk. So we believe in that you're going to be able to walk. See, your friends who are around you have got to redefine what wholeness and healing looks like. Notice his friends didn't buy him a wheelchair. Notice that his friends didn't buy him any chrome-plated crutches. They said, you are sick in this place, but we're not going to leave you here in your sickness. Nowhere does it say that the man wanted to go. His friends took him and said that you got to come out of this. See, you, we are tired of you saying you're feeling sorry for yourself and you laid up seeing you just complaining and depressed and sitting on the side of the road. You cannot be our friend and be a beggar at the same time. We're going to drag you to come see Jesus. Oh, I wish I had a church like that that would look at their friends and say, I'm tired of you being lonely. I'm tired of you being depressed. I'm going to drag you to see Jesus. Because if I can get you to Jesus, oh my God. See, see, you see, some of you all are never going to get what God has for you because you want to be the smartest person in the room. You want to be the wealthiest person in the room. You want to be the wealthiest person in your circle. And God said, when you are a real friend, you got to drag people to where you are. You got to pick them up. And now you have a plan because they say that if you, we can just get to Jesus, some things are going to change in our friend's life. 
You got to be willing to say, listen, uh, I know you don't go to church, but come to church with me this Sunday. Matter of fact, I'm going to come pick you up. And when I pick you up, uh, we're going to drive to the church and we're going to sit there together and I'm going to help you through everything. And I guarantee when we see Jesus, it's going to change your life. When we experience the power of the Holy Ghost and he falls afresh in that worship experience, you're going to change. And that's what these men did. They saw themselves uh, looking at him and coaching him, helping him. They said, listen, they, they recognize that as a real friend, we're going to get to Jesus. And so they coach him. And when they get to the door, something happens. The door is blocked because they can't get in because of the crowd. It was that capacity. And, but now they switch up from being coaches to referees. Because they have a problem, they can no longer coach. Now they got a referee. Watch being referees, they blow the whistle and say, uh, we do not, we are not going to be deterred. We are not going to be deterred that while it is that we would not be able to get through one door, we're going to find another way to get through another door. We're going to make a way where there is no way. You see, you need some real friends. Your real friends got to be innovative. If your friends only know how to do stuff by the book, then they they done lost their hood instincts. I'm going to help you. If they only know how to do it by the book, they lost their hood instincts. You got to find some friends that will say, where there's a will, there's a way. You know mama knew how to figure out some stuff she didn't have all that you had, but she knew how to make it work. You see, your real friends have got to be innovative. They got to know how to make it work. They got to be able to say, listen, uh, um, girl, you, I, I know you want to go back to school. We're going to figure out how I can babysit. We're going to call all our crew, and we'll babysit each night that you're in class. We're going to help you to make it work. Man, I know you want to go get that MBA. We're going to help you. I know you ain't got money to be able to take fill out the application. We're going to put our money together, help you get the application, and figure out how you can get a scholarship. You got to have some friends that where there's a wheel there's a way they take him up on the roof because the house was too crowded and watch this when they tear the roof open my brothers and sisters see your friends have to be willing to work to see you make it that's when you got some real friends they're willing to work to see you make it i don't know what you talk to see here's the thing i don't want you to talk me to death and tell me what you would like to do i want you to put in some work I want you to make some sacrifices. That's what real friends do. Watch it. This man never asked them to do it. And here's the sign of authentic friendship. That is, if you know I'm struggling, don't ask me what I need. If you know I'm struggling, don't ask me how can I help you when you know what kind of help I need. You know, I ain't got time for you just running your mouth. You know what I need. Just go ahead and provide that need. Don't that make you upset when people know that you're struggling and they know you're trying to make ends meet and when the ends don't meet, that's why the middle don't bend because the ends will never meet. They need to help you. They need to provide something. That's what real friends do. The text says they tear open the roof and they begin to lower the paralytic man down. And, and when I'm a real friend, I got to be friend enough to let you down. In other words, there are some things, my brothers and sisters, in my friendship that I got to say no to. I, I can't keep giving you everything and, or else you're never going to learn that God is a miracle working God. See, when I'm a real friend, the testimony of my friendship is when I can say no and you still know and believe that I love you. Me being, me being your friend does not agree that I go to agree with you everything that you're saying and everything that you're trying to do. Me being your friend is sometimes saying no. Me being your friend sometimes is putting my foot down saying, I love you, but you ain't coming in my house drunk no more. I love you, but you, you are not going to cuss in my house no more. I love you, but no way in the world am I going to let you fall, follow into this foolishness. We are friends friends and I'm going to put my foot down. So they lowered the man down and when they lowered the man down, Jesus looks up and here's what is real crazy. It blows me away because watch this. The man is coming down on the gurney and Jesus does not look at the man. He looks at his friends and when he looks at his friends, he says, I saw their faith. Y'all just missed it. Well, you missed what I said because look at this. The man is sick and the Lord looks past the man who was weak in his weakness and was handicapped. But he sees his friends that brought him. 
And the Lord has given me an incredible insight. And that is, I don't want you to miss this. He said, I'm getting ready to bless all of you for being a friend to somebody who's weaker than you. The Lord is saying, I'm sick of church people only hanging out with people who are strong. That is, don't, 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 don't say that you are got an anointing on your life and you filled with the Holy Ghost and the anointing is I can find somebody. Your anointing is if I can find somebody who is in their brokenness, God can still allow me to help them even in their brokenness. That is that I can walk with a leper and don't have to worry about catching leprosy. In other words, you got to recognize that you got so much anointing on your life that what you're walking in and what you're experiencing, God's got you covered. That's why you can say if, in fact, you are a secure man, you should have no problem ministering to a young man who's confused about his.